Welcome to Planet Microcap. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and joining me today is Roger Hamilton. He is the founder and CEO of Genius Group. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is GNS on the NYSE. Roger, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Good to be here, Robert. Absolutely. It's great to have you, and I'm glad we were able to figure out this uh, time difference. Uh, you're just a little bit in the future, yeah. so, uh, you know, that's uh, that's it's good to hear uh, that, uh, that uh, the future is looking bright. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was just sharing. Future's bright. Uh, we're 15 hours ahead of you at the moment in Singapore, and um, it's a it's a great day. And uh, with all of the uh, wild news that's coming out of America at the moment, just coming from the other side of the world, to say that um, at a global perspective, you step back. Uh, we are heading into good times, I believe. For sure. Well, we'll save that. That's something for another day. But, you know, our goal here today is to um, talk a little bit more about Genius Group. You know, you're the founder and CEO. This is your first time on our program doing an interview with us. So, you know, real quick, can you start us off with that quick overview and history of the company? Yeah, definitely. So my background was I studied as an architect in Cambridge. Uh, I thought I was going to go down the architectural pathway and ended up going down a very entrepreneurial pathway uh, through my 20s, had a whole series of uh, different businesses that I started, some failed, some succeeded. And I got to a point uh, when I was in my 30s where I was thinking, you know, there's a huge part of education. This is before social media came about. And um, it's when there wasn't a lot of entrepreneurial education uh, and saying there's many more and more people who are looking to be entrepreneurial. In fact, we're, I believe this year, going to be seeing a tipping point where over 50% um, of the working population in America are going to be in the gig economy, which means that they've got a second job or they're having to think in some way about their personal finances. So we launched Genius Group, number one, as a entrepreneurial platform for people to get education. It became an edtech platform. We grew to over 5 million students, now hitting 6 million students. Uh, and uh, more recently, to prepare for where we're now going in the world, especially with technology, uh, we have become very focused at AI and AI education. Uh, and we are currently in the process of setting up 100 genius cities. Smart city has smart technologies. Genius city has smart technology with smart people. Uh, and that smart people requires education. So um, we've got all these different tools, uh, a platform, and more importantly, city leaders around the world uh, that are building this out to this year, $100 million plus in revenues. Uh, and uh, we are hoping, given that we've tripled in the last, um, in the last three years, uh, no, actually 10x in the last three years, uh, that we look to do the same to get from the hundred million to the billion dollar size within the next three to five years. Got it. So, you know, to, to keep it simple for the folks out there listening, it's like, all right, Genius Group, it sounds like they got a lot going on. I understand they're a group. So, you know, in doing a quick search, you know, that's a consortium of companies they have under their, the umbrella of Genius Group and, you know, AI, education. I mean, these are a lot of, of, you know, people hear that they're like, "All right, okay, AI company. What, 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 what's their big differentiator?" So, two part question. One is, give us a lay of the platform itself, all the different companies, and what makes up the group. And then, what would you say makes the technology that makes up all these different companies unique and different compared to some of your peers out there? Sure. Okay. Well, well, just to explain how the group uh, fits together and how we've designed this in such a way to solve what we think is a really big need that's out there. Um, anyone following the AI side will be seeing the likes of Google, Microsoft, team up with governments around the world, uh, putting sizable amounts, like billions of dollars, uh, into basically funding uh, the education of their citizens um, into uh, the ability to be able to use AI. So for example, this happened recently in Abu Dhabi and, and Dubai, where we have genius cities. It happened recently um, in Stockholm, Sweden, where we have genius cities. And the, the challenge is that this money is going in, but you don't necessarily have got uh, on the ground uh, the right people in place to be able to do the education, right? Certified to educate on AI and to be able to train on the latest tools. And at the same time, to ensure that each individual has got the entrepreneurial skills to actually use AI in the most effective way. So uh, the reason that we have uh, grown through a combination of acquisition as well as just organic growth uh, is because generally within education, everything's very compartmentalized. You know, you know you've got schools that at a particular age um, send people off to university. You've got universities, which also have a certain age after which you're into the workforce. And even at the workforce, um, you've got different people who are getting education to reskill themselves, or you've got companies uh, that are looking at uh, uh, getting to the right types of education to be able to reskill their teams. Um, we have basically said we're a lifelong education. And so rather than us building it all from scratch, we bring the right companies together to enable that to happen. So for example, within our group, 
uh, we acquired a New Zealand company called Education Angels, which is specifically early learning, right? Going up to primary school. Uh, we bought a company called eSquared in South Africa, which is an entrepreneurial school for primary and high school. Uh, we have got a university and a university partnerships. We just partnered with Abu Dhabi University uh, and we're building AI hubs uh, within UAE and around the Middle East. Uh, and then we also have just more recently bought Fatbrain AI, which provides the training as well as the tools in AI uh, for companies at the B2B level and even governments as well. We just announced this week a $22 million deal with the Kazakhstan government where they are looking to upskill their entire citizen base with AI. And we're in there basically delivering the tools as well as uh, their sovereign AI, meaning that they bring their data together. So not only have they the ability to use AI, but actually to keep their data um, uh, uh, with the culture of the country and with uh, the values and tools that they want in the country as well. So what happens to someone who comes to our platform, whether they're you know, a, a young student or whether they're someone who's looking to reskill themselves, the first thing that happens when they come to the platform is they get their team of AI. So we began with one AI a year ago, which was built off GPT-3, uh, which is called uh, Genie. Uh, Genie basically will meet you, be your personal tutor, and then guide you based on your specific passions, purpose. Uh, we have assessments for all of these that the AI then goes through with you. Today, we have a whole team of AI. Uh, we have a, a two platforms, one called student.ai, which is specifically for students. Uh, and many students every day are, are joining up for that to get their free AI. Uh, and then we also have got this at Genius Teams level where you can get your CFO, uh, your COO um, as an AI that then is working alongside you. Uh, and uh, we ourselves took one of our AIs, which is called Alan Turing. Uh, we have Einstein, we have uh, um, Newton, we have these different AIs, which are based on historical figures, which means that they have uh, different viewpoints and different perspectives compared to each other, so they can work together. Um, and when we uh, saw that Alan Turing was uh, doing a very good job of actually getting a really clear picture of where AI is going, we actually appointed him as our, as our um, chief AI officer uh, within our uh, C-suite. And so he shows up at all of our C-suite meetings as well. Um, so that gives you a bit of an idea when you get your AI to start with. The next thing that happens in the same way that, you know, if, if, if you were at a point 100 years ago where you had a horse and you had to ride a horse, and you said, hey, you know what? I don't need to go to one horsepower. I can go to 100 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower if I buy a car, right? Then you get the car. Well, guess what? You now need to learn how to drive the car. And so that's where the education comes in, where we then basically give all the tools which people then upgrade and pay for to then use those AIs far more effectively. Uh, we're just not going from one to 1,000 horsepower. We're going from one to 1,000 human power. And that's where the world is going right now. Uh, as far as edtech platforms, especially public listed ones, I don't believe there is any other public listed education company at the moment that's providing um, all of their students with uh, an army of AI and then teaching them how to use that effectively so they can be far more productive for themselves as well as for their company. Well, why is that the case? I mean, that, because that's a big statement to say. It's like, all right, well, if you're the only one, is there, is there a reason why maybe some of these other publicly traded ed tech companies aren't incorporating an AI solution? Because you know, I, I, I can kind of think off the top of my head of that, you know, you know, learning is a subjective experience, right? And, you know, every student is different. Yes, there is an overall curriculum, but, you know, we want to have that, you know, person to person interaction. Maybe there's a fear of, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, I, I guess, hacking so that, you know, now you're indoctrinating these children with ideals and morals and values through education that maybe they don't necessarily want, or, and that's a fear. Like, what? why isn't it the case that other ed tech isn't incorporating more AI, and yet you're leaning in even harder? I think there's two big reasons for that. I think the first one is, I think a lot of people forget the fact that two years ago, there was no AI, there was no chat GPT of any sort, right? Like, you know, Microsoft, Google had not been launching their co-pilots, their Gemini, like none of that had happened two years ago, right? Even one year ago, all the tools that we're hearing about now, the boom in, you know, the Magnificent Seven in NVIDIA, this has all been in the last six, seven months. So you need to move very, very quickly. And generally with the public listed companies, um, you know, the kind of competitors that we have, whether it's a Coursera or a Duolingo, they have their own model that works in a particular way. And so they have to have a pretty big pivot to actually focus to this. I think the second reason is because while, uh, you know, the uh, a public listed company has got to show a particular model to investors, for investors to really understand uh, what it is that's enabling them to multiply and grow, um, trying to explain to an investor, you're going to pivot and go down a different, very different path. That's a very high risk for a public company to take. In our case, we, from day one, um, have been really clear that we have a model, which we call the genius formula, which is not specifically about a particular 
uh, methodology for the student to take, but more it's about a metric in which we say we believe that the future is going to be more and more students who are not looking for the old education system. They're looking for a more personalized path, which means it's going to lead into AI. They're going to be looking for a path which is going to give them relevant tools for the future, which is also going to lead into both AI and technology. We have those technologies. So, for example, one of the acquisitions we announced recently was with um, OpenEXO, which is run by Salim Ismail, who was the founder of Singularity University with Peter Demandis and uh, Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil basically just, you know, republished his book, The Singularity is Near, and it's called Singularity is Nearer. This just came out this last month. Um, so these are the experts who are at the forefront of all of this. And our genius formula says we believe that we can actually get students for under a dollar per student joining our platform because of the virality and the way we're using assessments. And we also believe that that student will be paying a dollar a month with us once they join us, which means we get the money back in the first month. We'll make 10 to $12 over the year. Um, and we've been using that metric since we began, and it's, it's served us well all the way uh, to now, you know, uh, our goal to 10 million students this year, uh, and it'll serve us well to uh, 100 million. And what that means is when we see that the actual acquisition cost of a student when we're using assessments is 65 cents, and once we start using AI avatars, it drops to 30 cents, right? Then, of course, we go down that pathway, and our investors understand, hey, that actually is a massive improvement in our metric just by keeping up the latest technologies and using those technologies as well. So I think that that's those two big reasons, which is we move very quickly. Uh, and if you say, well, how do we move so quickly? Uh, we have a different structure than most companies. Uh, uh, most of the tech companies we know have got a very traditional hierarchy. You have a CEO like myself who then has to make all those decisions. And it's very difficult for a CEO to be able to manage the complexity of a company at the same time as have all this innovation taking place. In our case, we're very different. We've actually got over 10,000 partners around the world that give us all the latest innovations and the latest ideas. Um, all of the AI that we use comes from our network. It comes from our community where they have gone out there and uh, set up startups, uh, worked with the uh, top AI experts, come with the best innovations. And we have a marketplace on our platform which enables us to pick the best and then say, right, that works great. Student AI is a perfect example. It wasn't designed in-house. It was designed with some of our team in-house working with those out uh, um, our source uh, and, and in different parts of the world. It was actually based in Lisbon uh, in, in uh, uh, where it got launched in Portugal, uh, now it's rolled out and it's gone global. Uh, and we're doing the same with all these other innovations uh, within our uh, platform and, and uh, in our community globally. So we're always going to be at the forefront of the technology as it appears. Absolutely. All right. So to close out here today, Roger, I mean, you know, there's a ton more questions I want to ask about this, but, you know, I want to keep it short and sweet, you know, but, you know, from what you can tell us, what would you say are some of the company's uh, value catalysts now moving forward for the rest of 2024 going into 2025? So for us, uh, the biggest piece, which uh, we're very excited by and is growing extremely quickly at the moment, is the way that we have set up our quarterly rhythm into one in which we have got what we call the Global AI Challenge, which all of our different cities are part of. So we have got communities in London, we've got communities in different um, cities in the US and Canada, all over Asia, Africa, and they all are basically competing together um, in a program which was first started in Singapore, which is where I am now. Uh, and basically it's like, you know, a two uh, month program where uh, all the startups, companies, students who come in, set up their project for what they're gonna achieve to 10X some part of their business or, or, or their community within, within two months. They use AI to do this. There's Genius Awards at the end of it. Our first ones, you know, had over a hundred people joining and we're gonna be seeing this uh, rise to the thousands. And all of those people that become part of this, they are our students and they then use our AI marketplace. We have three parts of the AI marketplace. We have the AI tools, which are the tech companies and the startups providing the tools that people can then use from all over the world. We have the AI training, which is all the training we then provide. Uh, we have certified trainers all over the world that uh, then basically provide that on the ground. And then we also have got the AI talent. So someone doesn't have to train up their team. They can go straight to our talent pool and get the experts to then come on board and work with them on the AI as well. Um, that's enabling us to get to our 100 million plus revenues uh, this year. And we have been growing by 50 to 100 percent for a year. And uh, based on the size of the market and the growth, uh, we really believe that's going to continue into the future. Very good. All right. Well, Roger, with that, where can our audience go and find more information about Genius Group? They can go straight to geniusgroup.net, which is about to be uh, uh, upgraded to geniusgroup.ai. So you can also go straight there. Uh, and yeah, we look forward to anyone who'd like to hear more about us. There's plenty of information uh, on our investor pages there. Very cool. Well, Roger, thank you so much for joining me today. Really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And I look forward to our next update. Thanks, Robert. Thank you.